Hi, it's Dwyer. It's February 27th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. A few boxing fans have reached out to me. They are fascinated by this Teofimo Lopez purse bid story that has Eddie Hearn and Bob Arum trading comments with each other. Now, let me just say this diplomatically. You know, I'm a fan of both Eddie Hearn and Bob Arum. Right? Boxing has a lot of people who cannot deliver for their fighters. Both of these guys, even though they're not the best of friends, both of these guys deliver for their fighters. Right? I can tell you from when I was a little boy. Bob Arum was involved with heavyweights like Muhammad Ali and they seem to be treated fairly back in the day, right? We know that a lot of these boxers haven't exactly graduated from Harvard. We know that you can have fancy legislation like the Muhammad Ali Act, but that the fighter might not be represented by great counsel. The boxing contract, and I've seen some boxing contracts, might be misworded, might have unnecessary vagueness and ambiguity might be hard to enforce. You understand too that a lot of great fighters in the sport, they'll go unnamed for purposes of this video. We don't want to embarrass any greats, but they've had tax problems. You get the feeling that this is a situation where the people at the top make money but don't get great financial advice. The people at the bottom don't even make money. Right, so in this sport, you have Eddie Hearn, who's delivering for Anthony Joshua right now, for example. Bob Arum, who is delivering for Tyson Fury right now, for example. They're arguing over Teofimo Lopez. Okay, fair enough. Just understand that if these are the guys involved in the deal, in the bidding, then you have really boxing's best, boxing's most credible, Uh, involved in the bidding, right? Let me also give a shout out to Golden Boy. Let me give a shout out to Mayweather Promotions. You do have some well-financed promoters in the business. Just understand that they are few and far between. Also understand too that a lot of these fighters on the way up sign with their best option, which might not be Match Room or Top Rank or Golden Boy or Mayweather. Right? They'll, fight, they'll sign with a regional promoter, and they might not get the best deal. That championship fight that you see they have might be their biggest payday by a multiple. In other words, the fighter will have risen through the ranks without really being able to afford a mortgage. Right, Years ago, I was in Orange County. And uh, I forget the fighter's name, but uh, he lost his title to Floyd Mayweather. And uh, they had an article in the Orange County Register. I encourage people to look up that article. The Register back then had an excellent uh, boxing editor and sports page. And um, this uh, fighter, his name starts with G. I'm just drawing a blank here openly talked about how even though he was a boxing champion, he had a problem getting a simple home mortgage. That's the sport. Let's talk about Teofimo Lopez. Let me just say this. His fight against Lomachenko was a bonanza. If he were a hip-hop artist, a musician, right? A rock star. He'd be fortunate to throw a concert where he got a million people to watch him. Well, understand, Lopez against Lomachenko averaged for the fight 2.7 million viewers. Folks, it was the most watched fight on ESPN over a three-year period. Right? This is a superstar. 
you don't get up in this range unless the fans know your name unless the fans have marked on their calendars the date of your fight and have made it a point to tune in at the time of your fight so the whole squabble here is much ado about nothing understand Lopez just wanted to get paid fairly you know what I say there's really very little money in boxing right the bigs get the money Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury they get the money most of the people don't right occasionally you get a Canelo a Manny Pacquiao who gets paid but again most of these guys don't you're looking at a title fight at times and you know the champ has really no financial concerns the challenger needs the win to pay the rent well Lopez of course just by definition he has a mandatory fight coming up against George Cambosis by definition since it's a mandatory challenger you're dealing with a world-class opponent now he could not reach a deal with his promoter top rank on the fight that's important right top rank gets a bunch of money from ESPN but that money has to last the year top rank of course needs to put on other fighters needs to show the others in their stable that they're getting paid top rank in some is operating on a budget so Lopez saw his numbers, 2.7 million people watching his last fight, understood the risk involved in this fight. It's a title defense. I don't care who's supposed to win. We know there's heavy risk involved. Heavy risk. We also know that Lopez's pay scale changes dramatically should he lose a fight. And this is a fight where the opponent is always one lucky punch away from winning it. So Lopez wanted to get paid his market value. He had a disagreement with top rank, his promoter, over what that was. So the fight went to purse bid. By definition, other bidders can get involved. So Triller, the same group that just had a bonanza fight. Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, that paid and overpaid everyone involved. I'm sure the fighters were shocked by how many pay-per-view buys that fight got. Triller wants to make a name for themselves, so they're willing to pay. They won the bidding. Right? Nothing wrong with that. Folks, this is the way the system's supposed to work. So Lopez is going to get $3.9 million for this fight. Now let me just make a few statements here. Most fighters in the game are not going to make $3.9 million for their careers. You understand that. You have some champions in the sport who haven't made $3.9 million for their careers. But in the bigger picture, the $3.9 million for the 2.7 million views that he got for his last fight really isn't that much. You understand that. Right? Lopez might well deliver more than 2 million views for this fight. Understand, advertisers love the idea of putting advertisements on fights involving guys who have proven box office. Right? That's what pays the bills, folks. You understand that. So, I applaud Teofimo Lopez in a sport where the careers are tenuous at best. Where that next fight could lead to an injury. 
that ends your career. Where that next fight could lead to a loss that ends your big money for the time being. I applaud Lopez for getting the $3.9 million. I applaud Triller for showing up at a purse bid and making a serious bid. Understand, getting Lopez for this fight might be worth far more than the money greater than $6 million that Triller paid to get the fight. Right? Because Triller is building its brand. And understand, Triller wants the same thing as the other participants, as Lopez, for example. They want an exciting, memorable fight that's going to have you thinking of Triller. Right? Already, you're going to have a lot of people who saw that Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight, who left that fight saying, man, that was a better fight than I thought it would be. Looking at this Triller event and thinking to themselves, you know what? Triller delivered last time. I believe they had Snoop Dogg as the boxing commentator, which was interesting. Right? Understand, you're going to have a lot of people flock to Triller because of the Tyson fight. If Lopez delivers here, you're going to have a lot of people flocking to Trilla for their next fight. Let me also say, too, please don't cry for Lopez's promoter, Top Rank. Right? Top Rank gets 20% of Lopez's $3.9 million purse. So they're going to net north of $780,000. Right, this is for not winning the purse bid. Top rank gets paid. Understand, according to reports, ESPN's paying top rank $84 million to put on boxing matches for the year. So I get that Eddie Hearn, who's a master at marketing, and Bob Arum, who is a master at marketing, are making this look like a big spat, right? They're getting people all riled up. Are you sure this is even real, right? Are these two guys actually trying to create some excitement for the Joshua Fury fight that they're trying to negotiate? Have you kind of like picking sides saying, oh, you know, Eddie Hearn betrayed Bob Arum by participating in this purse bid. Right, or saying, oh, gee, you know, Bob Arum made some rough statements about some of his fighters, Terrence Crawford, for example. Now he couldn't reach an agreement with the guy who delivered 2.7 million views on average for his last fight. This had to go to purse bid. Understand, this might be a marketing ploy to get fans worked up. So by the time Joshua and Fury Enter the building, everyone understands you're dealing with match room versus top rank. Right? So, my advice to boxing fans is enjoy the show. Boxing does have a financial side. I like the purse bid protocol because it gets great fighters like Teofimo Lopez $3.9 million paydays. Right? I also understand the scarcity in boxing. These paydays don't come around that often. Crowds of 2.7 million viewers don't come around that often. And I also get the showmanship. Right? In the 70s, as you can imagine, Bob Arum had some choice words from time to time with Don King. Now he has some choice words from time to time with Eddie Hearn. Right? Same thing. They're great at their jobs. This went to purse bid. Neither guy won the bidding. Triller won the bidding. It's all good. The fighter gets paid. The promoter gets paid. The opponent's getting paid. The fight will go on. Let's all enjoy it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.